Welcome back to our series on probability theory. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 451, part A, and we are going to talk about Chebyshev's inequality and convergence in probability. And this is part one. So in the last section, we looked at the central limit theorem, some examples. Um, actually, those were after the simulation or after the sufficient value of n. We talked about the sufficient size of n. The book goes into much more detail on that um, in specific cases where you actually know the distribution or when you look at the data and see that it's symmetrical and, um, uh, let's see, symmetrical, unimodal, uh, then we can have a smaller sample size and still um, approximate the normal close enough. But the rule of thumb is n is greater than or equal to 30. And then I hope you watched the simulations and the videos from Khan Academy. So in this section, this is section 5.8, and we're going to show that x bar is a good estimator of mu. We're also going to show that y over n, where y equals the number of observations in category one when there's two possible categories. So we're going to talk about P as a proportion. So we're going to say that um, we say that P hat equals, and that's not a very pretty hat, P hat equals Y over N. And that is the estimated value of the proportion P for distributions like the binomial, the negative binomial, the geometric distribution. Okay, so um, we're going to show that y over n, where y is the number of observations in a certain category, divided by the total trials or the total sample size, uh, is a good estimate for the population proportion p. We're going to talk about the convergence and distribution, which we uh, just did with the central limit theorem. Then we're going to talk about convergence and probability, and that is Chebyshev's inequality. And there is another type called almost sure converge, uh, convergence, but that is an advanced topic like I used in my dis dissertation. So we won't cover that in this course or the next. So uh, the convergence and probability. Let x1, x2 to xn be a sequence of random variables. We say that x sub n converges to x in probability if, given epsilon greater than zero, we have the limit as n goes to infinity of the probability of the absolute value of xn minus x, if that, as that, the probability that this distance between x sub n and x is less than or is greater than epsilon, so that probability is zero, okay? So it converges, x sub n converges to x in probability if this probability uh, converges to zero, basically, okay? So it approaches or converges to zero. So x sub n minus x, the probability that this distance is greater than some number epsilon that we choose, some positive numbers, usually small, um, that, uh, that probability that this distance away from x is greater than epsilon, that probability goes to zero as n goes to infinity. And we write that x sub n arrow, so approaches, converges, and p means in probability to random variable x. We normally use Chebyshev's inequality to establish convergence in probability, okay? So this is important, right? Especially for um, next semester, if you come into the mathematical statistics um, course. Or you could say mathematical statistics part two if you consider this part one. So here's Chebyshev's inequality. Let's say that the expected value of x is mu, so it's mean, and the variance is sigma squared. Then for any epsilon greater than zero, the probability that x minus mu, absolute value of x minus mu, this is the distance, 
This is the the um, what we call L1 distance or the um, linear, not linear, we call it the uh, one-dimensional distance, if you will, okay? So this is a distance, one measure of distance, that the probability that the distance between x and mu is greater than some value epsilon, that that probability is less than or equal to the variance of x divided by epsilon squared, okay? So this is a formula you want to write down where you can get to it quickly. That the probability that, um, or actually you want to write this whole thing down. So um, if, if e of x is mu, variance of x is sigma squared, then for any epsilon greater than zero, the probability that the distance or the, the um, yeah, so the value, the difference between the value of x and mu, the absolute value, is greater than some number epsilon, is less than or equal to the variance of x over epsilon squared. So this is an important theorem called Chebyshev's inequality. So here's the proof. The variance of x is equal to e of x minus mu quantity squared. And if we assume that this is continuous, then this is equal to the integral of x minus mu squared f of x dx. And again, we're doing this, uh, oh, and so um, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate this instead of, uh, so yeah, so we're going to integrate this where the absolute value of x minus mu is greater than epsilon. So we're going to look at that um, set of x. And so we've got, uh, so we're going to look at that. And so this is, okay, so we're breaking this up. So from negative infinity to positive infinity, we're going to break it up into two portions. So the per first portion is where x minus mu absolute value is greater than epsilon. And the remainder has to be the complement of that, which would be x minus mu is less than or equal to epsilon, the absolute value again. Right? So this would be every value of x then. No matter what mu is, either the distance is greater than epsilon between x and mu is greater than epsilon, or the distance between x and mu is less than or equal to epsilon. That's the only two possibilities you have. Okay. So here's a depiction. We have two regions uh, to match the integrals. Okay. And so uh, let me zoom in here. So we have a negative x and a positive x, and we can say that um, x minus mu is equal to epsilon at this point, okay? And uh, the absolute value of x minus mu is equal to epsilon, and here in the positive, x minus mu is equal to epsilon, where mu is in the center, right? So this distance here is x minus mu. This distance here is really mu minus negative x. Or this is mu, um, yeah, minus negative x. Okay. But the absolute value, uh, so, um, yeah, so actually this will be mu minus x, right? So this would be mu minus x, so x minus mu absolute value is mu minus x. So we're the same distance this way, as we are this way. And so in here, we're in region one, which is where the difference, the distance between uh, x and mu is um, less than or equal to epsilon. And regions two, these two regions over here make up region two, where x is further away from mu than epsilon. Okay? So, and that's what we've written here. So region one is where the difference between x and mu is less than or equal to epsilon, and region two are the regions where x, the distance between x and mu is greater than epsilon. Okay. So, um, so we have these integrals here. So I need to clean this up a little bit so that we can go back and see what we were looking at. So we have um, 
these, this region. So we're saying that the integral of x minus mu squared fx dx for region one, uh, for region two, plus the integral of x minus mu squared f of x dx for region um, one, this is one, this is two, that that area is um, going to be less, uh, greater than or equal to epsilon squared times f of x dx, okay? So we'll, we need to, in order to understand this, note that x minus mu squared is greater than or equal to epsilon squared in, um, oh yeah, under this region, okay? So the whole thing has to be greater than the integral across the region where region 2, both regions 2, okay? So these are added together, this, these areas, and this integral is added together there, okay? Because x minus mu squared has to be greater than or equal to epsilon squared in these regions, not in region 1, but in region 2. So maybe I should shade this oppositely so that um, you know that we're talking about this area here and this area here, okay? So um, remember that um, x minus mu in these regions is greater than epsilon squared, okay? So if x minus mu is greater than epsilon squared, then these two integrals have to be bigger than this integral where we've switched out x minus mu squared with epsilon squared. And we removed um, this integral here, right? Okay. So when you look at this, um, we have, I, I like to have it a little closer, so we have the integral from x minus mu greater than epsilon from x minus mu quantity squared f of x dx plus where x minus mu less than or equal to epsilon, okay, x minus mu squared f of x dx. If we make the substitution here with epsilon squared, okay, so we have question mark, integral of epsilon squared f of x dx, where x minus mu is uh, greater than epsilon plus epsilon squared f of x dx, x minus mu is less than epsilon, and less than or equal to epsilon, not 3, If we get rid of this, all right, this quantity, then um, this quantity now is, whoops, hit the wrong thing. So this quantity here is now greater than or equal to epsilon squared, which we've put there, and we've got rid of this integral. So obviously, this quantity here has to be greater than or equal to epsilon squared times uh, the integral uh, from, of f of x dx over this region, okay? And so we can say that this region now, this new integral, let me clean this up, it's not so messy. So this integral here is equal to epsilon times the probability that x minus mu is greater than epsilon. That's what this is, the definition of this, right? We're integrating um, where x minus mu is greater than epsilon. We're integrating the, the PDF dx, and that is the definition of um, the probability there. So therefore, um, the probability, so now we have this epsilon, so this is going to be uh, less than or equal to what we started with, 
And what we started with was the variance of x. So this is going to be, oops, I'm so sorry that uh, uh, sometimes when I touch the screen, I hit something hidden and it, it does something. So this is greater than, or, this quantity is less than or equal to the variance of x. So if I solve for this by dividing both sides by epsilon squared, it's a positive number squared, so it's still a positive number. Then we have our inequality, which is Chebyshev's inequality, and we have proven it. So now, our first example, we want to show that p hat is a good estimator for p. And this is a good place to start in our next video. So uh, we'll start there next time. Please don't forget to scan and upload your lecture notes before midnight of the date listed in the course calendar. Uh, if you have a question, come to virtual office hours, and I'll give you a hint. If you need a hint or answer prior to uh, being able to come to office hours, by all means, email me, but please email me a picture of the problem because I may not have it handy and a picture of your work so far so I can see uh, how you're approaching it and that will help me help you better. Please take care of yourself and stay safe and we hope